I'm DMing a level 1 one-shot tonight, and after nagging one of my players numerous times, they've just sent me this gem of a character sheet. Ah yes, the noble ranger, Sprint Flank, known for his esteemed background as a... a... a, a yes. Whatever, whatever a yes does. With my strengths and qualities being the, the fact that I rolled 16 three times and then rolled 9 three times. It's, uh, it's some of the best and worst rolls. You know, he's good at what he does and he's bad at what he doesn't. Look, constitution and strength are pretty high up there in the priority next to dex for a ranger. But, but I don't think he realizes rangers cast spells with their wisdom modifier. And with a minus one... I don't think there are many creatures that are going to fail a DC 9 saving throw. But all of this is just a distraction from the most obvious oddity on this sheet. And that is the fact that this guy is a flocking level 1 in a level 7 one-shot. I mean, hey, maybe he misheard and made 7 level 1s. That or this player who's apparently been playing for a year and a half needs to finally read the player's handbook. My name is Jacob Crow, and welcome to The Crow's Perch, where each week I dive into terrible tales of tabletop tragedy. And today, we have quite a few stories to tell. So, let's get right into it. Our first story is by one of my patrons, Ars Tarak, who returns with another story of one of their games. But this one is a bit... peculiar. As an invitation to a game goes incredibly well, before taking a sudden turn. You'll see what I mean in a second. So, without further ado, let's gather up a murder and dive right into this story. My friend invited me to join a 5th edition game he is part of. Someone dropped, and several of the players in the game have played with me before. We all know each other and get along well, so I accepted. I have never met the DM before. We both were in the same online community, but never really interacted. Still, the DM has heard of me, and I him. All good things. Both of us see no problem for me joining. The dungeon master suggests a one-on-one -on -one meeting ahead of time to create my character and get me caught up on the lore and setting, so I can easily slide in during the next session. Great idea. I am added to the game's Discord server and roll 20, and we hop on a call. My character sheet is in order. He and I have been in many games before, so generating the character goes quickly. Tokens are made and uploaded, and a paragraph or two of backstory is hammered out. I am all ready for the next session later in the week. We spend more time just talking about games in general swapping stories of games long past, both epic tales and horror stories alike. I tell him about a player at an Adventure League game who threw a temper tantrum, arguing that on average, a plus three bonus to hit was more effective than having advantage to hit. I offered to explain to the player how he could easily prove which case was better, but he had none of it. I shrugged and dropped it not wanting to let this turn into a bigger argument than it already was. The DM is suddenly very quiet and reserved. He asks if I ever went to college and what I majored in. I told him that I was a comp sci major, but I tried to dual major in math. The only reason I don't have my math degree is because of booze and other poor life choices. I failed the last class I needed and just gave up took my one degree, and ran. The DM tells me he's not sure if I'm going to be a good fit for the group. He's sure that the other players will not get along with me. It's not that there's anything wrong with me. There is just a question of compatibility? I am honestly confused. I have played with most of the other players before, and half were in a game that I was running, but he is suddenly adamant that I cannot be part of the game. I am quickly removed from the Roll20 and Discord server. I have been in a horror story or two, so I don't fight this. It's clear we are not going to get along, so there is no point in trying to argue. I do want to know what I did wrong, however, or at least what changed his mind. Since I am not in the Discord server, the call is over, and I am just sitting there. 
Eventually, the friend that invited me to the game got a straight answer out of the DM. He didn't like that I knew advanced math, and was worried that I would just look up the monsters and calculate the most effective way to play the game, and essentially power game to the point that he couldn't balance around me. He said he didn't trust people who knew more math than he did. He was sure I was a nice person, and wouldn't mind being friends with me, but he can't play TTRPGs with anyone who is going to use math to ruin the game. I am not sure. Maybe he thought I was being overly condescending somehow? That, or honestly he really doesn't like people who know math? Regardless, as we often say, no D&D is better than bad D&D. Look, I've joked about math rock jokes as much as the next GM, or complained about games that use excessive pluses and minuses and other floating modifiers instead of simpler mechanics like rerolls or advantages and disadvantages, but if someone wants to do the math, I'm not gonna stop them. When someone at your table has a particular set of skills that the rest of your party doesn't have in real life, it can be interesting to let them do something with it. Even in games with light math for combat, having someone with the know-how to organize your group's money is pretty damn worthwhile. A skill like that is a gift at your table, not a curse, and I'm wishing you luck in finding your next game. But I have far less kind wishes for the player in our next story. So without further ado, let's keep the murder going and dive right into it. I am the Game Master. We had two out of four players missing for an online four-shot campaign on the first session. For balancing reasons, I tossed in a character of my own as a GMPC. A chaotic, neutral, gambling-loving goblin girl. One of the two players is a ladies' man out of game. He fell instantly in love with my PC and started instantly flirting to her in character. I wasn't entirely sure if he was flirting to her or me, as I've had to turn him down before. So I ignored him at first, then in character, showed disgust to a tasteless joke, then ignored him again. After the second session we talked in voice with him and the second player who was present, I said that I wanted him to stop flirting with my PC. Because I can't separate it from real life. He called me a bad role player. He said it would ruin his immersion if he suddenly stopped flirting, as flirting is what his character would do. He said stuff like, <laughs> Why would you think I like you? God, no. <laughs> no, I really like flinks. She's hot. I explained that even if I now know it is strictly in character, it still makes me uncomfortable, and I'd rather have him not do that. He got super mad at me, saying stuff like, you are ruining my immersion, and called me boring. I listened to him shit talk about me for like three minutes, as the other guy tried to calm him down and make him see my side. He finally relented and said, Hey, okay, fine. If it makes you uncomfortable, I'll stop. I am not an asshole, after all. Boy, how the hell are you gonna have the audacity to say that after spending three minutes making fun of her? This is an extreme cope, and if they haven't been kicked from the game already, your group really needs to consider letting him go. This is a level of simpage for a goblin short stack NPC beyond the ken of mortal man. Do not pass go. Go directly to horny jail. And speaking of players that need to be locked up, we've seen players fight over love, but what if the lover in question didn't exist? Let's keep the murder going and dive right into this lover's quarrel. Imagine it's Halloween, and somehow or another, your route takes you through Haddonfield. You're almost at the city limits, nearly out of there, when you see Michael Myers. His white Shatner mask has clearly taken some damage. His blue coveralls are now caked with dirt and blood. 
His kitchen knife glints in your headlights. And then, just as quickly as he appeared, he walks right past your car. You stomp on the accelerator and don't look back. You're safe, but for just a brief second, you witnessed abject terror. This is such a tale. Allow me to set the scene. It's the early aughts. Sometime around 2004, possibly 2005 to 6 even. I'm at a convention in a college campus. D&D 3.5 is the toast of the town. The RPGA was out in full force, taking up the entire floor of the convention space. All non-D&D games are upstairs. While I was an occasional AD&D player back in those days, I had never actually tried out 3.5. So off I went downstairs, with a free RPGA membership card and a blank character sheet. I'm pretty far from my house, so imagine my surprise when I run into an acquaintance. We weren't best pals, but we traveled in the same circles. Let's just call this guy Dave. So, Dave, myself, and a few strangers go through a pretty bog-standard dungeon crawl. Honestly, I have no complaints there. It was a pretty decent way to show off the 3.5 mechanics. I go to head back upstairs. Time to scarf down some food and head to my next event. Only, I can't get upstairs. There's something in my way. Rather, there are two somebodies in my way. A man in a button-down Goku shirt is speaking very angrily to a man wearing a full-print dragon t-shirt. They're getting louder. I'm seeing finger-pointing, chest-poking, and spittle flying from screaming lips. I'm hearing expletives and name-calling, and I have nowhere else to go except straight past them. Back into the D&D room I just left, or through the fire escape door, which will cause an alarm to sound. Now, I've seen behavior like this before, but usually it's from people who have been overserved alcohol at a fair or carnival. In those cases, inevitably somebody would doff his shirt and pounce upon the other party. But both of these men were, presumably, sober, and neither seemed willing to escalate the situation beyond its current state. Plus, thankfully, mercifully, both shirts stayed on. At this point, about 10 people were standing in the hallway, all waiting for these two guys to move, so we could make our way upstairs. Goku shirt man seemingly gained at least a modicum of self-awareness and yelled, I don't have time for this. She's mine. With that apparently final word, he stormed back into another one of the D&D rooms. Dragon shirt man followed angrily behind. I wanted a burger, but I also had to know, what in the... Dave shows up and guffaws. <laughs> you don't know? I reiterated that I was clueless. They're arguing over a woman. That much seemed clear from the she's mine declaration, but it had not yet occurred to me why this would be funny. Who was this nerdy goddess? She must really be something, right? I'll bet whoever she is, she probably plays some sort of multi-class character when she's not DMing her own amazing homebrew campaign. Dave laughs even harder. At this point, he's beat red, holding in tears and cackling maniacally. He stammers out the next handful of words between giggles. She's a barmaid, he says. <laughs> An NPC barmaid. He takes a really deep breath. She's not even real. I start laughing too. To quote the six-fingered man, I think that's about the worst thing I've ever heard. How marvelous. And at this point, I realize we're walking right past the doorway. Goku shirt man and dragon shirt man have stopped their argument. At least long enough to glare at Dave and myself. Remember when I mentioned driving right past Mr. Myers? Their combined nerd rage stare was giving off a similar aura, but nothing further comes of it. We head up the stairs, 
Dave and I eat some Burger King, and we enjoy the rest of the convention. At a certain point, I did ask the obvious question. Why didn't the DM just give her a twin sister or something? But every once in a while, when people start taking tabletop stuff too seriously, I think about those two guys. Then I take a deep breath, and I realize to never let myself get that wound up about a game. This kind of situation is typically caused by what is known as bleed. I've talked about bleed before in other videos, but to reiterate, it's basically having your roleplay bleed into your own personal feelings. It's not inherently a bad thing, as you should, presumably, feel things when you play a game. But this is perhaps the most blatant case of what it looks like when it goes wrong. And boy, did it go wrong. But you know what doesn't go wrong? Hitting that like button, ooh, segue, and serving capital punishment to that subscribe button. Made it this far? Why not leave a comment? Can't think of a comment? Then consider leaving the comment, reminds me of her. So I know you made it to the end of today's video. Want to further support the Crow's Perch? Then you can become a member or patron by following the link or hitting the join button to join our Burb aristocracy, like our Counts of Quills. Like Aaron Kados, Kirito Kazuto, Critical Kunik, Evix, King Drazil, Christian Pip, Cosmosis, Rikus, Vincent, Haley Thompson, Zero Fang, and Netscape Navigator. Or for only five dollars, you could join our Barons of Beaks, like Valley Sun, Kieran Slater, Running Bear 2525, Ginger Ninja, Haley McOliffe, Brittany Mars, Raytheana the Nerd, Sarah Warren, Spectre Spark, Ars Torok, Ghost Legan, Mr. Hypocritical, Jesse Shodell, Kuntos Weasel, Tech Blog, Corristor, Car Despawn, Jester King, Lord Rend, Wormy, Den of the Drake, Mickey and Onya. Kevin. For five dollars more, you could become one of our Dukes of Feathers. Kevin, get the wallet from your parents' room and put your mommy's credit card number. Kevin, and those three wacky numbers on the back, Kevin. Don't forget the wacky numbers. Kevin. Okay, I'm not going to do this skin rig voice for the whole time, okay? I'm going to read the rest of these normal. All right, let's go. Repetitive debug. Elf. Kive mind. The School Bus, Mirage Vaxis, Quinn, Jarrett Sewer, Blues Otters, Jared Zemlin, Doc Salty96, Matthew McQueenie, and Acroth. And with all of that out of the way, I'll see you next time as the crow flies. <laughs>